hello everyone we are going to study in this video the structure and functions of the male and female gametes we'll first study the structure of ovum the ovum is the female gamete it is a haploid cell and is almost 0.1 mm in size this is the largest cell of the human body and is present inside the ovary it is produced by the ovary let us see the structure of the human egg now it is similar to the other kinds of cells just the terms differ what i have drawn right now is the outer membrane which is called as vital line membrane vital line membrane is secreted by the cell itself the nucleus is usually at the center but later on it shifts to the sides this position of the nucleus is called as eccentric position the nucleus in the ovum is called as germinal vesicle inside the nucleus the nucleolus is found and this is known as germinal spot the nucleus contains all the dna the haploid number of chromosomes that is x and the information the hereditary information and after fertilization this will fuse with the male's chromosomes either x or y so this is the nucleus the position of the nucleus divides the cell into two poles the position of the nucleus where the the cell has is called as animal pole and just the opposite pole is called as the vegetal pole fertilization will take place between the chromosomes of the male the nucleus of the female and the male that means the ovum and the sperm and it will it is the animal pole from where the sperm will gain entry it becomes convenience for convenient for the sperm to fuse with the chromosomes and therefore this is the place from where the sperm will enter inside the ovum so animal pole decides the entry of the sperm and it is so that it will come very easily to the chromosome the nucleus and therefore this is animal pole and the opposite side is the vegetal pole now there is a clear space outside this vital line membrane there is no cell over here this is just a jelly like material and this is known as this layer is known as zona pellucida zona pellucida is secreted by the cells which are present immediately outside and these cells are called as follicular cells the follicular cells have the arrangement in such a manner that it appears to be radiating outside i have made it here i am making it over here also however it surrounds the entire circumference of the ovum this is known as the complete layer is known as corona radiata corona radiata is made up of follicular cells it is the follicular cells which has secreted this clear liquid clear zone called as zona pellucida which is a gel like material where no cells are present corona radiata has the follicular cells which are glued up by a particular substance called as hyaluronic acid hyaluronic acid glues all the follicular cells together and this is the layer outside this layer there is a dead 
membrane which can be hardened later because it is made up of calcium and these are this makes up the outer shell the outer tough layer which is called as the shell the calcium layer the shell which is secreted by some cells which are present in the oviduct so it is this secondary oocyte which we call as ovum is not having immediately that calcium layer now let us talk about the cytoplasm the cytoplasm which is inside is actually called as ooplasm now ooplasm is divided outside into a thin zone which is not very thick and is called as exoplasm this is called as exoplasm while the inner part which is quite dense and thick is called as endoplasm which has all the cell organelles this particular part is called as let me label it here endoplasm and both of this forms the ooplasm which in a common cell we will call as cytoplasm so as i said the cell has similar structure like that of a normal cell the outer layer is called as vitelline membrane which is a plasma membrane in other cell the cytoplasm is called as ooplasm and the nucleus is called as germinal vesicle so the just the terms are different otherwise it is the same and this is the largest cell so the ooplasm has all the cell organelles over here so this is the structure of the ovum the ooplasm is rich in nutritive uh, in yolk which can be divided into two parts the nutritive yolk and the formative yolk in human beings much of the yolk is the formative yolk and there is very less amount of nutritive yolk because the role of nourishment will be played by the placenta so if the yolk quantity is very 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 less we call it as microlecithal so the human ovum is known as microlecithal which means that it contains very little amount of nutritive yolk and the formative yolk will form the entire body that means after fertilization it will uh, take the responsibility of the formation of the zygote and rest of the parts of the fetus so nutrition in other organisms like the hen when it produces the egg the yolk is having quite a good quantity of nutritive yolk because it is in no more connection with the parent's body the yolk is rich in protein and fatty substances and this only gives nourishment to the growing chicken inside the egg so it depends upon which type of species the egg is being formed so in human beings much of the yolk is formative yolk and very little amount of nutritive yolk is present so this type of yolk is called this type of egg is called as microlecithal egg while i discussed about the hen's egg that is macrolecithal in which the yolk is quite good in quantity now let us see the structure of sperm the sperm is the male gamete it is haploid cell haploid means it has just one set of chromosome it can be either x or it can be y since we know that the males are heterogametic so it can be either x or it can be y and it is flagellate that means the tail is resembling the flagella like structure which is meant for locomotion so let us see the structure of the sperm the sperm is divided basically into four different regions the first region is the head and the head is comprised of the nucleus and the acrosome the second region is neck 
which is bit conspicuous it's not very distinct although it is there it is very small the third region is the middle piece and fourth part is the tail the head has a very large nucleus which occupies much of its area this has a depression in this place and it has all the chromosomes and the genetic material that is present just above it is the acrosome present this acrosome is made up of the golgi body this region is the head it is oval in shape and is meant for penetrating into the egg now there is a small neck and the neck region consists of two centrioles the two centrioles are named the one in the anterior position is called as proximal centriole this centriole will help in the spindle formation during the mitotic divisions spindle formation during the mitotic divisions after the fertilization will take place the sperm and the ovum will fuse to form the zygote now when the zygote will divide mitotically this centriole of the sperm will help in the spindle formation the second is known as distal centriole the distal centriole produces long fibers these are all axial filaments also known as axoneme which help in the formation of the tail these are called as axial filaments so this region is the head region which has this acrosome and the nucleus and this region is the neck now comes the third portion called as the middle piece in this middle piece the mitochondria is packed up in a spiral manner this spiral manner of the arrangement is known as nebenkern nebenkern is the spiral arrangement of the mitochondria which is needed as the energy source because mitochondria generates power in the form of atp and this power will be utilized so that the tail flagellates and the tail is used for propelling that means it will move forward with the help of this flagellating tail now this region which is above in the head region above the acrosome there is one more layer which shields it and is present just above the acrosome and is present till the nucleus this is called as gallia while from here another layer comes out and is extended till the lower region so this is an additional membrane which is inside the plasma membrane and this is known as manchet and after that comes the tail the tail is very long it is formed by the axial filaments and this flagellates continuously and brings the movement so this is the structure of the sperm it is one cell one cell having nucleus acrosome is the golgi body and this golgi body secretes the sperm lysins the sperm lysins are the enzymes rich in hyaluronidase 
now in this video only when i discussed the structure of ovum i told that all the follicular cells are glued by hyaluronic acid this hyaluronidase enzyme will help in breaking the follicular cells which are glued up with hyaluronic acid and this will help in paving out the way for the sperm to reach the haploid egg of the ovum so this part is meant for penetrating into the ovum so acrosome is present in the front and as soon as it reaches the ovum it will then release all the sperm lysins the follicular cells which are glued up by hyaluronic acid will be opened and then it will reach the zona pellucida region and then it will enter inside the vitaline membrane to reach the chromosomes the haploid set of chromosomes of the ovum the nucleus will release the chromosomes these are the centrioles the mitochondria and which gives the powerhouse and this is the long tail so this is the structure of the sperm so 50 percent of the sperms that are produced can be x or it can be y the length of the sperm is almost 60 microns it's not much while the female ovum is quite large in size so the size of the sperm is 60 microns and half of the sperm that means if the sperm is x the male produces the x sperm and it fuses with the x ovum then a female will be born while if the sperm is y and it fuses with the x the male child will be formed so it is by chance or it is 50 50 percent because the sperms that are produced are 50 percent x and 50 percent y so there is a possibility of the young one to be female or male in 50 50 percent so this is all about the structure of sperm if you have any doubts you may ask me in the comment section and you may see the questions in the description box thank you